Hello fellow AGD coders, welcome to another video. This is not a tutorial, this is just a sort of update from the um, lab, if you like, where I've been experimenting with uh, converting uh, games from different formats. And uh, the reason that I've been looking at this is that, as some of you will know, uh, I wrote some code recently which allows you to store the sprites in only uh, 32 bytes. It saves a lot of memory, but it does mean that uh, games from 4.7 can't be loaded in uh, directly. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd uh, update the system and um, display all, all the sort of pointers and memory positions on screen. Obviously, I've done some of that before, but this is a little more thorough. And uh, what I've done here, in fact, is uh, I've looked at... Uh, version 4.6 because I thought if I'm going to make a converter I might as well do it with uh, 4.6 as well so I've got uh, John Blythe's game here Foggy's Quest running here you can see the game itself I've bypassed the uh, control menu and um, I've made a little sort of patch program which you can load into the character set and then you apply a couple of pokes and uh, once that's done um, it will basically display all of this information here which is all of the the addresses and the file sizes of all the different uh, data that you need to uh, to transfer over so as you can see here um, there is quite a lot of data and uh, I separated it all out so that uh, you could import the blocks only or the screens only or the sprites and so on uh, there is a little bit of setting up to do as well because when we go over to the other version we have to define the screen and define the number of blocks and screens and various other bits and pieces so it is it, it's it's fairly involved but it's not it's not too painful and um, obviously once it's done then uh, then you're away and uh, here you can see the uh, data itself it's just a little program you load that binary in do a couple of pokes and then it will actually cause uh, version 4.6 to display the information that you can then make a note of. And so here we can see I've also done the same thing for this newer version of uh, AGDX. Uh, I haven't updated the number yet. It's this, it still says H, but uh, it is a newer version. It's also a couple of bug fixes, which I'll, I'll mention in the Facebook page perhaps when I release this. But as you can see here, I've actually got uh, a little arrow that I can move up and down and this is going to actually allow me to uh, increase or decrease the actual uh, amount of memory that each of the uh, elements is taking up which means I can match it to the exact size of the data that I want to import. First thing I'm going to do here is going to create a load of blocks. Now you can probably see I'm doing this very quickly. The reason for that is that I've removed the, uh, the confirmation question that comes up when you create a block and once I did it, I realized I should have done it a long time ago because it makes it much, much easier to create a big load of blocks all at once, which most of us like to do when we're working on games. So just let me double check um, that I get the correct number of blocks. I think it's uh, 79. Uh, just a minute. Let me just, uh, oops, should press previous, not P for, for paper. Uh, we've all done that, haven't we? Uh, so yeah, we can see there. There are 79 blocks. I can see there from it. it says 790 anyway, so that's why I know that it's uh, each one is 10 bytes. And uh, the number of screens. Let's also make a note of that. So we've got 27, 28 screens. So what I'm going to do is also make a note here of the size of the window. So it's uh, I think it's four from the bottom there and two from the left and the right. Okay. So let me just create a couple more blocks. Um, just one more actually isn't it there that should give us uh, yep so we've got that one there 790 so that matches up so now as you can see here we'll just uh, let me just switch over and show you that you can look at the two pointers side by side and obviously they're not stored in the same place in memory because there's a lot more data in there but this number matches up and uh, when once that number matches up it means I could load the blocks in I would copy a binary from that first address and load it in at 37074 here and there you go that would be the blocks but I don't want to do that because I can show you here that we can actually because blocks and screens are stored right next to each other it's actually easier to uh, import them both together 
So the first thing I want to do then is just uh, check that I've got that correct. I think that's uh, I think that looks right. Let me just see here. So that's five, ten, and twenty. Yep. Okay. Great. So that's the right size. You've got to have the right size before you import, obviously, because otherwise you're going to have to delete all the screens, and that wouldn't be fun. And then we are going to create all the screens here as well. It doesn't take too long. We've got 27 to create, so this doesn't take too long. Uh, the number of screens is stored in uh, in memory, and we could potentially poke it, but um, I wanted to keep this process fairly poke-free if possible, just for, for, for newcomers. Okay, just a second. That was the compiling page. I need to switch over to the 4.6, so just ignore that one. And here we can see, yep, so that's screen 27 there. So we've definitely got that right. But obviously, as you can see, we've got a completely different size of, uh, of screen because, as you can see here, they're all completely empty right now. And uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be that easy to change the size of the of the screens to uh, to match. Here you can see we've got um, the data 8,852 bytes, and this one is only 308. So we could create a lot of data and sort of until we got to the right number. But using this uh, this new pointer system that I've got that can allow you to adjust it, um, I can basically go down to here. And I use the arrow keys left and right and uh, plus and minus. So plus and minus add 10 each time and left and right add 1 each time. So all I need to do then here is just expand the amount of memory that's been reserved for the screens until it matches the, uh, the memory on, um, on the original. So let's just go to there now. I'll show you how we do that. Let's go back here. Just double checking everything because you have to be careful. Once you start doing this, there's no turning back. So, if you if you do this once it's released, uh, save the game each time before you do an import so that you know that you that you're okay. So we're pushing the memory up as you can see there. All the other counters, all the other memory positions are also increasing as the um, as the um, memory is expanded to take uh, the, the place that we need for the screens. And we want to go up to 8852. Want to make sure we don't go over 8852 because otherwise it's going to push all the other data uh, down, and um, we don't want to do that because obviously it would probably cause some kind of corruption. So we go to 88, and then we just nice and steady go all the way up here until we get to 52. So yeah, we're just pressing keys one by one. We can do it nice and steady, and there we go. So we didn't want to go over. And uh, there we go, that's perfect. So now we can see we've got uh, both the screens and the blocks with the correct amount of memory. And we've also got the correct amount of uh, blocks and the correct amount of screens. So that means we'll be ready to load this file in. So I've got here foggy blocks and screens. I exported them both together. And as you can see, the size is here uh, 9642. And uh, that might seem a little bit strange. But uh, actually, if you look here, you'll see, just a second, I'll just do that again. You can see that the sum of the blocks and the screens, 8852 plus 790 there, that's the total. So I'm actually importing at 37074. And what I've done is I've added those two together because they're stored together in memory. And it will allow me to import them both at the same time. So let's take a look now Look at the blocks. And we can see here. Yep, there we go. That's obviously a block preview. So we know we're in AGDX. No, no, no question about that. And here, as you can see, we've now got all of uh, John's wonderful screens here all loaded in and uh, ready to be coded. So uh, yeah, that's that's the first part done then, isn't it, really? Blocks and screens, quite a big step. Now, um, you can also obviously do the same thing with the, with the sprites and the uh, positions and the objects and the messages. You have to set the right number, obviously, of messages and sprites and so on. But once you've done that, um, it's all pretty straightforward. The only thing that I've had trouble with here is with the events. I found I can move uh, code from 4.7 to um, 4.7x without any problems. 
uh, but um, for some reason 4.6 well at least with this code uh, it crashes when I get when I set it up and then try to import the data it won't work so um, I'm hoping maybe Jonathan might be able to shed some light on that for me perhaps there's a some difference in the way that the tokens are interpreted or something like that I don't I don't know uh, hopefully I'll be able to find a way to, to do that obviously so you guys can uh, can load in um, your old games and uh, perhaps take advantage of some of the, the new features of uh, AGBX as well okay so I think that's pretty much it for now as I said it wasn't a tutorial just a bit of an update really um, this thing has been a pain in the rear I've got to tell you but I managed to figure it out in the end and uh, that's always uh, uh, satisfying when something's tricky so yeah okay thanks a lot then guys and uh, as always uh, take good care of yourselves and uh, happy coding see you soon bye bye